Hello everyone, welcome again to the channel. Today I want to discuss with you some news uh, regarding Russia and uh, let's get started with the first one. I, I found this, uh, this story very interesting. It's talking about uh, how many Western brands left the Russian market. But um, what is not uh, widely known is how the legal system in Russia changed after this. So the legal system in Russia has changed um, that is not conceding, let's say, marketing, marketing image or some copyright claims over certain designs or brands that previously were uh, enforced according to most uh, international standards. Even if it, in my opinion, personal opinion, not legal, is that uh, this should not be enforced so strictly. That's the way they were doing it. For example, we know this uh, story where Microsoft was uh, creating a legal case about um, the name of the brand because it was a guy whose name was Mike Rowe and he created a website and he was uh, working with software so he created the website and the name of the website was Mike Rowe Soft. So even though in writing it was completely different, when you pronounce it, it was sounding similar to Microsoft and they created a legal case and apparently they couldn't win so finally they reach an agreement with him but see, this is in my opinion the kind of abuse that uh, big brands big companies impose on smaller companies that they just want to use whatever name they want and if they think it is somehow similar or uses uh, just similar colors or similar concepts they are not allowed to use it in my opinion, this is an abuse on the part of big companies. But what is happening now in Russia is that they de decided to go in a complete uh, different way. And they started to allow uh, all these uh, things that previously were not, let's say, um, very popular. So, for example, Coca-Cola left. And uh, some companies uh, came back uh, and started to sell their own products with their own formulas, their own brands, but somehow the formulas could be considered probably in the West uh, too similar, too similar to the original. Uh, so I will show you something here that uh, it is, um, let's say, a good example something like this for example this you see this can here says fantola so what they were saying is that is um, is some kind of fanta but is cola so for sure this in the united states will not be approved even if in my personal opinion has nothing to do with it of course is using the con the colors of coca-cola but it's actually using part of the name of, uh, let's say, Fanta. But uh, in my opinion, the, the, in the West, they are too strict. Just because it uses the F-A-N-T, does that mean that you cannot create any other product that uses those letters? Well, in the West, you will, you, the judge will usually side with the big company. So this kind of uh, product will never be allowed to exist in the United States, for example, or maybe in most Western countries, but now it's allowed in Russia. I don't see the harm. I think uh, people know that they're buying a product that is not in any way related to Coca-Cola, so in my opinion, is not harming the brand. But this is what is happening now in Russia. This is allowed and is becoming... Uh, increasingly popular. You see products like this, like Cool Cola, which some people will say, oh, it sounds like Coca-Cola. Well, maybe not. And this is Fancy. It's another, let's say, product similar to Fanta. And uh, 
the yes because it uses the F, they will say, oh, it's using the F, so it's similar to Fanta, so cancelled. And you see this product here that says street. And it uses uh, similar colors to Sprite. So they will say, oh, it is too similar to Sprite, so cancelled. So this is what I'm talking about, that this, in my opinion, is actually um, creating some um, artificial situations where big companies are not allowing small ones to do things that are actually not harming the brand because people will not be deceived into believing that it is a Fanta or it's a Sprite or it's a Coca-Cola. They will know it's not. I don't see the harm. And they also mentioned in this article, this thing that is, uh, they are calling parallel imports. For example, some products are no longer being sold in Russia and Russia is now allowing, um, let's say, uh, persons or companies to import these unofficially, let's say, uh, for example, feminine products, carefree, they go someplace where they are sold, they buy a bunch of those and they import them illegal, let's say legally import them into Russia, but they sell them inside Russia without the permission of the manufacturer. I don't see the harm in this, I think it is perfectly normal. Um, I don't see why it will be a problem, but of course there are legislations uh, to avoid these kind of things. <clears throat> but now in Russia they they were forced by all these uh, strange sanctions and all these cancel Russian culture, so they decided to do it like uh, they don't care anymore about. Uh, pleasing anyone in the Western countries, Western economies. So they are more, more lenient on this kind of situation. And um, for example, they mentioned the case of um, the Golden Arcs, that there are some establishments that are using the Golden Arcs, even though McDonald's is no longer in the Russian market. That is a little bit more dark and I think is probably not right to do it, but they allow it. They mention also the case that now champagne products are allowed to use the name champagne in Russia when before it was not allowed because of some international agreements that only products coming from the region of champagne were allowed to use it. Now they, they can do it. It is allowed. They also mentioned the case of uh, Stars Coffee, which is the company that came after Starbucks and is using an, a logo that is completely different from the original Starbucks, but is using some elements that some people say are too similar, like the colors, for example, and the name Stars is similar to Starbucks. And the same is about the stars. It's actually a very Russian concept, the stars. That's why they are naming it stars. Because the stars in Russian has, in Russian culture, has a different meaning. The woman itself is a Russian woman with a special thing on top of the head that is also part of Russian culture. But I'm sure this will never be allowed in the United States, for example, or in any other country. Even if it is completely original, they will never allow it. So that's uh, the kind of uh, thing that uh, is happening now. So it's uh, completely new things that are ha happening now in Russia. And uh, I cannot blame the Russians for doing this, but uh, in a way these companies decided to do this for very stupid reasons. There was no, no real reason, no real business reason to exit the market that was very profitable. But they did it for uh, PR basically and to please some opinion, public opinion. 
but uh, many of these companies are actually harming their their businesses by doing this so that is what what is happening currently i thought it was interesting to mention it and talking about a uh, russian business that is called wild berries wild berries when i was living in russia um, this is a very popular website it's providing some kind of um, service similar somehow to the service that you get from Amazon so they have all kinds of different products and they have um, different ways of delivery um, usually they have different offices uh, even in small towns very small towns they have these offices uh, so you order something online and then the product comes to the office like a small warehouse <coughs> And you can pick it up from there after a few days and uh, I think this is a very successful business in Russia so what they're doing is that um, they are rebranding this is the Russian name in the website even though everything is in Russian the official name of the website is Wildberries and they recently started to register the name Yagotki which in Russian means berries. So now they are going to rebrand the website and they are going to use it, but apparently as of now, they're using it in parallel. So maybe it will never completely disappear or change to Jagotki because I think there is a lot of uh, effort and investments done in the in the wild berries so probably will not be very wise to just change it overnight but they say they want to keep the trademark from being used uh, from someone else who maybe think it is a good idea to use the name because uh, it is uh, the Russian version of the berries and in the previous episode, I, I mentioned this about the Stars Coffee, which is the successor of Starbucks. They started selling alcohol in their menu, and they are going to do this in some of their premium sites. I thought it was a very good idea. Of course, Starbucks is not doing it. They are only selling coffee. But I think uh, since they already have very good locations, I think it is going to only be positive for their profits if someone wants to go there and drink a coffee or someone goes and wants to drink alcohol. I think it is great. I think it's a great idea. Maybe it will be very successful. I, I think it is a very original idea and since they no longer have to obey the original uh, design or processes that Starbucks was following so this will change business in there and the next one is about um, self-reliance and uh, domestic production Russia decided that we'll start making automatic transmissions ABS systems and airbags for their domestic production car productions which were before mostly imported but again because of the sanctions and many other things they start to focus on this and they say they are going to produce small diesel engines automatic transmissions ABS systems airbags and of course it's going to take some time because uh, now with the globalization a lot of countries were not doing this locally so they had this plan to do this uh, and uh, the target date is 2035 so that's going to take a while it's not going to happen overnight but um, they are going to focus on this and i think it will this trend will not be reversed so maybe it's a good thing i don't know we'll see time will tell <clears throat> there's a new proposal um, so they want to start using 
some um, Russian Russian aircraft that was uh, originally produced when it was still the Soviet Union that is called um, Jack 42 and uh, this um, the owner of this company is planning to lease some of these uh, original Jack 42 aircraft which were modernized and they have an increased flight range and so they want to um, promote the use of these uh, airplanes to uh, Russian airlines so they will not have uh, problems with sanctions and of course they will not have problems with uh, spare parts because these were completely locally produced or completely produced locally and it is um, a very good idea I previously mentioned the fact that in the MS-21 and the Sukhoi, I think it's S-100, they're also going to be producing uh, local, local versions without any import spare parts by the end of 2023, but this is still more than a year into that. So this is how it's look how it looks this Jacob Leib Jack 42. It's a big big airplanes for 100 to 120 passengers designed for short to medium range flights but like they say here they modify this so it can fly longer. So it is uh, how they are adapting in the market to survive. And this is a proposal for uh, a law to be introduced in, in Russia. So they want to give a parental salary which will provide uh, parents on maternity leave. I think this is a great idea. Um, you know, in Russia, they have for some time produced, uh, uh, created some legislation to support uh, uh, motherhood and parenthood and families and they want uh, families to have more children so they are doing all kinds of incentive for this. This is not new but I consider something very very positive about Russia that they are doing this. So this new proposal will basically um, allow a mother to stay at home permanently so she will have a salary just for being a mother. I think it's great and uh, they also have um, some proposals that they want to have some uh, preferential mortgages for couples, preferential mortgages for mothers, and some incentives for marriages. So what they want to incentivize is basically families. If you know, Russia has, uh, has had for some time some declining birth rates. It's not, it's not the only country in Europe that is having this problem, <clears throat> but um, they have been uh, mildly successful with all these uh, policies and they, they want to do even more. So I think a lot of countries should do this. This is uh, something worth investing you know, in the future of your country. And of course, um, they want to create more incentives for uh, as you have more children they want to include incentives as as far as uh, three children maybe more later but for now this is what, in, what they have so this is something very good um, I, I think it is uh, good that Russians are doing this for to protect families and I wanted to give an update to the previous episode that I mentioned that the first ferry from Yeysk arrived at the port of Mariupol. Yeysk is in Russia. Mariupol is in the Donetsk uh, People's Republic. So Mariupol is in this part and is going back and forth between Yeysk and Mariupol. I mentioned that um, this was a historical ferry that was running daily before maybe a few times a day 
And the chip that got there was the name of the chip was La Lavrenti. And the first, uh, they, so the update is that they mentioned that the travel time is about four hours and they will run once a day and the ferry can carry 136 people and up to 20 trucks or 700 tons of cargo. Originally, the line is intended for the delivery of goods necessary for the restoration of Mariupol and other settlements in the Donbass Republic. So maybe later will become more a CBO ferry or civilian use. And they also mentioned something else here that they establish a railway connection between Mariupol and Bolnovakka, which is a regular electric train. And the train is designed for 200 people and the ticket price is 27 rubles. That is half a dollar. That is very good, I think, very affordable prices. So that's good news, good news um, is complementary to something I already reported before. And this I thought it was interesting too. So when I was in Russia for me it was very interesting that um, school children go to school six, six days a week, you know, so Monday to Friday and they go also on Saturday. So I couldn't understand it for me, you know, coming from Mexico. We have had for the longest time five days, uh, weeks for for students uh, all all the time. Nobody goes to school on Saturday, but in Russia they do it, and they started to introduce this proposal. So they want to to make it a five day five day week, five day for school uh, that are elementary schools and middle school students. They, they say that um, in general they think children do not have time to relax and spend enough time with their parents. Yeah, because they have only one day, only one day free to relax. But unfortunately for high school students, uh, they will continue with the sixth day. So bad luck for them. I, I honestly don't understand, you know, it's uh, like a completely different culture in this. Um, of course, they are used to it, you know, they have been doing it all their life. But I think at, it, at least it's positive that uh, small children will have the opportunity to have uh, more days to relax than they have currently now. So that's it for now. I wanted to just share this news and um, let me know what you think about it in the comment section. I want to remind you about the opportunity to help me support my work with uh, donations in the description of each episode. I include information about different platforms you can use to support me. You can also help me by liking, sharing this episode in social media and subscribing. I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you for watching.